never felt so beautiful and so evil all at the same time. Oh, hey! Hi! It's me, Wilma Fingerdo, with the Fingerdo Review of RuPaul's Drag Race Holland Season 2, Episode 1. I mean, another fabulous Denise Journal week. Maybe I'm not Wilma Fingerdo. Maybe I'm Cruella Fingerdo. <laughs> It doesn't matter. It's all going to go down the same way. Ooh, speaking of going down the same way. Jorge, drink me. Uh, well, ooh, what is this? Oh, why is it green? Oh, it's the glass. Oh, vodka and soda. Mm. Mm. You're evil. <laughs> all right, let's get to it. Well, it's back to the land of tulips and windmills, and after a welcoming video by Rue, we jumped in with both Klomp and to meet Reggie B, who was giving me some serious Jan vibes. Or maybe it was just too soon for those kinds of energy levels. Either way, she had a lovely reveal from her high-low short sleeve to a stunning leotard with strategically placed nude illusion panels. I have to say, the transformation of that queen from a boy is impressive. I'd have never known that 25 year old boy was that 30 year old drag queen. Seriously. Because Reggie was the first queen into the room, she had to entertain herself. I'm sure, it's not the first time. But she wasn't alone for long because Ivy Elise was next through the workroom doors dressed as a mermaid with a very forced, you poor unfortunate souls, which I'm sure would have gone over better if there'd been more people in the room. Being dressed as a mermaid wasn't a random thing. Ivy is a member of Mermaid's Mansion, along with Season 1's Abby OMG and the winner of Season 1, Envy Peru. Right off the top, I knew this one was going to be difficult when she started talking about her manager and not revealing her age. 35. Clearly, someone thinks her potential may be limited if she lets anyone know she's over 30. But I'll tell you this. I thought she looked fantastic for 35. For 20-something... Not so much. I don't know about you, but there didn't seem to be a lot of love lost between Ivy and Reggie. Just me? Next to the workroom doors was Juicy Couture, who looked about as interesting to me as... Well, okay, she didn't look interesting to me. I'm not sure why these children inject themselves with Botox and filler at such a young age, but it makes them look drugged and disinterested. I mean... She didn't even smile once, and, and, and I didn't seem to be the only one not impressed by the juice. Reggie was definitely not expecting to see her here because, well, she has no stage experience. How do these baby internet queens expect to do well on Drag Race without any stage experience? Unless their only reason for being there is to build their online presence. You could tell that Ivy was feeling the same way, telling her that she had no style or taste. But I wonder how Ivy really feels. Seriously, I was getting Megan Schoonbrood vibes from the juice, and we all know how long she lasted on season one, I'm just saying. Next through the workroom doors was a real stunner, and I'm not talking about her name, My Little Poonie. Now that's how you do Botox and fillers, I hope. Because, well, she looked good for 38. She got a warm welcome from Reggie, who, while excited to see her, was clearly intimidated by Poonie's skills. Maybe it was the name. It throws me, I'm just going to say. Speaking of looks, Vivaldi was next to the workroom doors and she was fabulous. From her overlong sleeves to her peekaboo nipples, my eyes didn't know where to land. Vivaldi was another one whose reputation preceded her, at least where Poonie was concerned. Seriously. Next into the workroom doors was an old school drag queen, and I meant that in every sense of the word. Tabata, this 46 year old is my kind of queen. Classic sequin gown with a pink foxtail boa. The fact that she admitted to gaining 15 pounds for the show made me love her even more. I also love the fact that none of the other queens seem to get her showgirl's reference of scattering beads on the floor. It means that Tabitha will be doing things the judges will get immediately. Seriously. Next into the workroom was what I thought at first to be the biggest hemorrhoids I'd ever seen. But no, it was Love Miss Sissy with two eggplants growing out of her head. I still don't know why. At 43, she's the third queen this season who's over 40. I love that. Eighth into the fray was the Countess. She looked lovely in her yellow asymmetrical tent dress, but what really impressed the queens was her canary diamond pendant, which she promised was real. Real what? I'm still questioning. 
Vanessa Van Cartier was next to the workroom doors looking very au courant with a full-size face shield and an obvious reputation because all the other queens seemed genuinely pleased to see her. She also is the only member of the trans community competing on this season of the show. Although, Romy Rocks is the first trans male pit crew member ever. Here's to Romy and Drag Race Holland. Well done, everybody. Finally, into the workroom was Kenna Minaj, who brought the number of 40-year-olds on the show up to four. I have to say that I was already excited for this season of Drag Race Holland. Unlike last season, there was no clear frontrunner for me off the top. In fact, with the exception of the juice, I thought all the queens looked like they could win that crown. Plus, the fact that there were more queens closer to 40 than 20 impressed the hell out of me. Seriously, here's to everybody. And then it was time for Fred to make her entrance. Fred looked fantastic as he welcomed the queens and let them know that this season's prizes didn't have a dress included on any level. That's right, the dress worth 18,000 euros got replaced with actual euros. 15,000 euros to be precise. That's just over 17,600 US dollars, which is still more than Drag Race UK doles out, I'm just saying. The Duchess, I mean, sorry, the Countess wasn't impressed. Which is fair, because I'm not impressed by the Duchess. Sorry, Countess. It's going to be a problem, isn't it? Of course, there was a crown and scepter in the prize bag, and the winning queen would also host their own stage at the 2022 Milkshake Festival, Amsterdam's weekend-long celebration of freedom of expression and LGBTQI fun in a love-filled safe space. Leave it to the Dutch, eh? Of course, that wasn't the only reason Fred was there. He was also there with the first maxi challenge for the queens. A talent show! Right away, the queens got out of drag and Tabitha started trolling the room. Thank goodness Fred came back to discuss what the queens were going to do for their talent show. Because I was starting to feel uncomfortable. Love Miss Sissy told Fred that she was going to be singing an original song called Speed Limit. Which she wrote just two weeks prior. Well, she wasn't busy enough getting ready for drag race? Reggie B not only revealed that she'd be rapping an original song, but that she was also Abby OMG's drag daughter. The Countess revealed that she would be playing a classical piano piece, while Vivaldi's lack of musical prowess meant she was going to do a burlesque number. You know, like you do. My Little Pony and Kita Minaj not only told Fred that they were best friends, they're also exes. And although they were together for four years, Pony was clear that it's not called RuPaul's best friends race. Seriously. While that was going on, Tabitha got blinded by Vanessa Van Cartier's bodacious tatas. Even though Tabitha supports all types of drag, she made it very clear that she thought Vanessa being a trans contestant was at an advantage not having to shave, tuck, or wear fake boobs. And she said as much to Fred. Tabitha said it would be like swimming in a swimming race with Aquaman. <laughs> Vanessa made a good point though it was actually harder for her to perform as a drag queen after her transition due to social stigma and prejudice no wonder she's proud to compete suck on that haters Juicy Couture who literally named herself off the Juicy Couture fashion line because in Dutch Couture sounds like C-U-N-T whore I bet someone's parents are awfully proud the Juice told Fred that her only talent is being beautiful, so that's what she was going to do. I don't know. I think that act is going to need as much work as she's already given her face. The next day, the queens were excited for the talent show and their first runway, but it also meant that one of them would be going home. Tabitha admitted to being nervous because, well, everyone else was so young, but then the Juice made a point that she'd never performed, so... Tabitha could be fine. I still don't know what's worse, an internet queen with no performance experience or a production for casting someone like that. I know that someone's got to go home first, but they could have at least put in a queen who'd put up a stronger fight is all I'm saying. And I'm not the only one. Most of the queens saw the juice as being an early elimination and they didn't have a problem telling her. The juice told the queens her talent was going to be posing, which Vivaldi questioned as a talent. Well, maybe not the way Juice was doing it. 
And then it was time for the runway. Fred looked gorgeous in an asymmetrical sequin gown. Joining Fred on the judges' table was comedian and impressionist Elise Schapp, TV host, singer-songwriter, and master impersonator Carlos Bozard, and the founder and director of the Milkshake Festival, Marika Samalo. Fred kicked the runway off with the talent show, and... For an audience, they had the cast of Drag Race Hall in season one come back. So good to see everyone again, and they all look good. Up first was Vivaldi's burlesque number. I like this number. I feel like there was more to it, but at least we got the highlights. Ivy Elise was next with an interpretive dance with wired flags that emulated fire. It wasn't a bad number, but it was far from impressive. My Little Pony did a pole dance, which started awkwardly, but ended on a high note. Mostly her high in the air with her legs spread apart. Who doesn't love that? Reggie B did her rap live and danced it out beautifully. Tabitha did a partner dance number, and although she almost slipped and fell there at one point, I still liked what I saw. Love Miss Sissy's song was fabulous and was only outdone by her brilliant costume. I loved it. It's her thing. The Countess played the piano. Okay, it was beautiful, but I'd be lying if I didn't say I got up to refill my beverage while she tickled those ivories. Seriously. The Juice lip synced to a number I'm still not sure that she recorded or not, but for someone whose talent relies on beauty, she really could have worn a better wig and makeup is all I'm saying. Also, her posing wasn't camera worthy. She was easily upstaged by her backup dancers and, well, that rip in her underarm. It distracted me. Vanessa Van Cartier did what I can only call is an art piece. It was spoken word and modern dance, kind of, and I was there for it. It was the most impressive performance of the night. Seriously. Keita Minaj was another performance that I felt was heavily edited. I would have liked to have seen more of her magic act, but what we did see was fabulous. Well, I liked it. And then it was time for the runway. Category is... Nightlife extravaganza. Oh, I love Poonie's outfit. It was colorful, fabulous, and gave my eyes a workout in the best way possible. Finger due for Poonie. I didn't get Reggie B's runway. The wig was horrible and diminished the rest of the look for me, so I had to give it a finger don't. Vivaldi's runway was fun. The wig was gorgeous, so she got a finger due for me. Ivy's runway was a little pedestrian for me. I wasn't a fan of the overt simplicity or her shoes. So I gave it a finger don't. God bless Tabitha. Although the idea of her outfit was a hoot, it wasn't executed very well, and I absolutely hated her makeup, so I gave her a finger don't as well. No offense, but the Juice's runway looked like a Halloween store costume. The color was great, but she clearly doesn't know how to walk in heels, so I had to give her a finger don't. Love Miss Sissy's runway was stunning. I love it when anyone can make brown fabric look glamorous which she more than did, and then, well, she gave us that wig reveal. I had no trouble giving her a finger do. Seriously. For someone who sees themselves on a pedestal compared to others, the Countess's runway was another Party City disappointment in my mind, so she got a finger don't for me. It's a fan. I love Vanessa Van Cartier's runway. It was 1920s fantasy meets 1980s The Limelight in New York. Elegance. Finger do for Vanessa. Mark it down. I still have no idea what Keita Minaj was wearing, but it was beyond stunning. The mix of patent leather and leopard print made it an easy finger do for me. And then it was time for the judges' critiques. First off, Love Miss Sissy, Tabitha, and the Countess were all safe, so, well, they freaked on off out of there. As for the rest, Reggie B was first to be judged. Carlos felt that there was some insecurity with her runway, while Marie K was not a fan of her baggy bottom. Whoever is. Ivy's Who from Whoville was next. Carlos felt her performance was great physically, but it wasn't in her eyes. Marika thought her runway was dull. Fred was amazed that no one said anything about her ugly shoes. Uh, I said something. I guess I just have to say it louder next time. Carlos told the Juice that she was beautiful, but I think he was just sugarcoating bad news. Fred thought her posing performance, well, could have used more posing. My Little Poonie was next, and Elise Schapp thought she was the whole package, and Fred couldn't agree more. Vivaldi was next. Carlos loved her performance and thought 
she was the one to watch out for, while Mareike called her the Vivian Westwood on the runway. Hmm. Good for Vivaldi. Next to be judged was Vanessa Van Cartier. Elise thought her runway was pure perfection, and her performance piece really moved Fred. I hope she meant that emotionally. Marike said Vanessa put her in drag heaven. It was a good day to be Vanessa Van Cartier, is all I'm saying. Kita Minaj was another one who wowed the judges, and Fred had to ask her to give them one more turn so she could admire Kita's assets. It's the Fred. <laughs> Back in the Untucked Lounge, it was assumed that Puni and Vivaldi were going to be top contenders for the win. Sadly, Ivy felt that she, the Juice, and Reggie B were in the bottom. But she was worried. Reggie didn't understand the Juice's negative critiques because all the queens were impressed by her first performance ever. I don't know. I bet the judges didn't know she'd never performed before. And what's more, they most definitely don't care. Back on the runway, Fred announced that this week's winner was Kita Minaj. Here's to Kita. Good for you, seriously. I just can't believe Fred doesn't like magic, muggle. Fred also announced that this week's winner would receive a badge, much like the Root Peter badge on Drag Race UK, but this one was called the Drag Race Holland Feather Up the Butt, to be more precise. God, I hope that's not where they have to put it. Landing in the bottom this week was, surprisingly, Reggie B, and not surprisingly, Juicy Couture. This lip sync had a predictable outcome for me. Reggie performed circles around the juice, literally. Not that Juicy made it easy for Reggie, but when the music died, I wasn't surprised that Fred told Reggie to Shantae. What did surprise me was the damage Juicy caused herself trying to kneel in stone tights. Fortunately, it wasn't enough for Juicy to get the sympathy vote, and she got the dreaded pork chop instead and had to sashay away. Well... What did you think about the first episode of Drag Race Holland Season 2? Did the right queen go home? Did the right queen win? Personally, this season is already heads and shoulders above Season 1 for me. There are so many strong queens in the cast, and after this week's challenge, they should all be scared of each other. Seriously. Let me know what you thought about this episode in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like this video if you did, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And... Until next time, miss me! Mwah! Seriously. I think that was an excellent first episode for him. Seriously. God bless Juicy Couture. I mean, I think it's great that these internet queens are putting themselves out there, but they don't do well. I mean, is it just production making sure one queen goes home so the others can all kind of feel like they have an opportunity? Personally, I would like to see a bunch of queens that are already good at everything so that they can really compete for the crown. That countess is gonna bug me. I can see it already. She already thinks she's, she's, she's precious. Ivy Elise is gonna be trouble. I can just see it. She is going to think that she uh, doesn't stink when she poops and uh, I think everyone's already turning their nose up at her, seriously. God, I'm glad that there's so many older queens in this. I mean, even My Little Pony is 38. She's almost 40. And Ivy Elise is 35, right in the middle. There's only four queens in the 20s. And one of them's already gone home. I love that. <laughs>